Welcome everyone to Dax Electronic Repair. Today we're going to be putting new thumbsticks or joysticks on a PS5 DualSense controller to fix the drift issue that many people experience. That is where you are standing still or not moving your thumbstick, but your guy's moving. It's quite uh, obnoxious. Anyway, so first we've got to take apart the controller uh, you pop that bottom part off of there starting underneath. It exposes two screws on the bottom of the controller grips. Take them out. There are two more screws that we have to take off to get the controller apart. Uh, and we have to go ahead and pop the L1 and R1 buttons straight up and off. They might give you a little bit of a put up a little bit of a fight, but they'll come off. Just try and get them, pull them straight off. This one kind of went at an angle. We got it, but it, it wanted to fight a little bit. So once you've done that, and eventually I will do that. As such and so you can see the two other black screws underneath there take them out and that will let us go ahead and yep yeah, those one and two that will let us crack this baby open um, start at the bottom Yep, just like that. Pull one side at a time just to get a little gap. Now there are two little clips right there. Release them, otherwise you will pull and break them. And then your controller won't quite snap back together right. Pull it, pull it down and out. Uh, there's little silicone dealies right there that I, one fell out. So I put it right back in, right back on, and all as well. Next thing you want to do is pull the battery. It's not screwed down or anything. You just take the cord and uh, the connector, get it, and pull it off. Um, there's one screw holding the battery tray to the board. It also holds uh, the bottom uh, microphone, I believe it is what it is. It has a ribbon cable, so you want to get that ribbon cable up. And then we're just going to pull all the other ribbon cables. There's another one right there. Super tiny. Take your time. Try and get a nice grip on them. Top ribbon cable. And then the side two for the uh, L and R buttons. Alright, now we're going to actually unsolder the two leads there. The black is always on top, the red is always on the bottom. Um, those are for the motors, the vibration motors, I believe. And that lets us just pick the board up and out freely. You don't really have to unsolder those, but it's a lot easier, especially if you're going to be replacing the thumbsticks. All right, so we take the caps off, and there we have the board and the thumbsticks. All of those solder points are for the replacement, well for the thumbsticks in general. So what you're going to want to do, I use my little soldering stand to clamp it because we are going to go ahead and get some hot air at 450 and we're going to start melting all that all the solder points at once. You want to be real careful doing this because you can see there are plastic connectors for the ribbon cables we just took off. Um, you want to keep your hot air away from those or you will melt them. Um, as you can see that's all you have to do and then just take your time and then the way I like to do it is I go in with my sucker and I suck out each one of the solder holes. 
That way I can just put the new legs in and I don't have to worry about heating up the board any more than I already have. And I'm actually doing both thumbsticks on this controller. Um, you're only going to see me replace one of them, but I did do both of them. Same process on the other side. Heat it up slowly and then kind of slowly pry from the bottom until it falls out. You don't want to apply too much pressure because you will rip pads. The legs will grab the pads if the solder is not completely melted. So just take your time, be patient, and watch the direction of your solder. You can see in there there's a lot of different plastics. Plastic and heat do not mix. All right, so now we have our new joystick. You can see all those pins need to come up and through the board. Um, they do easily bend, so you kind of got to watch. Make sure they didn't come bent and make sure all of them are sticking through. Make sure it's level with the board itself. There's a little spacer on the bottom made of plastic. That's just part of it. Um, it needs to be sitting at a uniform level. And now all we do is we just go through and we solder those, those legs, all those points, all those legs. Um, fill it up until it's nice and all around. Nice little cone shape. Do that for each little one. Make sure you're not bridging connections, meaning make sure you're not putting too much solder where one of the legs touches another legs. Uh, the solder doesn't bridge over to another pad. <clears throat> and that's how you do it. I go ahead and get the board cleaned up a little bit just to be nice and, and fancy. You can see there's a little bit of discoloration from the heat, but there's no damage to the board itself. Just take that toothbrush and clean it right off. All right, so we got both of them installed. Same deal on the other side. I didn't record that, um, but exactly the same way. Um, Pop your thumbsticks back on. Do not forget to do that. Those they cannot. If you put your controller all the way back together and you don't have those uh, thumbstick caps on there, you're taking your controller apart again because they don't go on from the outside. All right, so now we're just going to go ahead and get all of our ribbon cables hooked back up exactly the same way we unhooked them. We're not putting any screws in yet. We're just lining everything up. I like to do that first because then we don't have ribbon cables uh, just flopping around when we're going to solder our our leads for our uh, positive and negative black and uh, red leads. So you don't want the soldering iron touching those ribbon cables. It'll melt right through it. So again, black on top, red on the bottom. Of course, that's from my perspective. Bottom of the controller. Not bottom of the screen as you are watching. I didn't like how that one was sitting, so I just did a little re-adjustment. All right, battery plate back in. Put our little microphone dealy ribbon cable back in. And now we've got all our connections. So we put our one screw for our battery cable, or I'm sorry, our battery uh, tray. <clears throat> I guess we have one more connection. We got the battery itself, which we will now do.
Make the connection, then lay the battery back down. It will only go in one way. Do not force it to try and go in the other way. You will short things out. Then we take our back cover and put it over the top first, over the top buttons, and then squeeze it on down the line. Uh, top two screws, just as we took them out. They're going under the L and L1, R1 buttons that we'd taken out as well. And our last two screws go on the bottom of the controller itself. Make sure the controller is actually, yeah, made it. Make sure it's in the right position, otherwise, you'll screw into air and it won't do anything. And you'll look foolish on the internet. All right, last thing we have to do is put our face plate or uh, last little cover on. This is a customized controller with a lady's face on it. Her name is Jessie and she's nice. All right, do it that way and then uh, do the, the top first and then you squeeze all the way to the bottom. And finally, and last but not least, we pop our L1, R1 button on. They just push straight down Excuse my hands, by the way. I was working on a motorcycle right before this. They are very clean. They are just stained. And that's how you do that. Now you got brand new thumbsticks with no controller drift. Now all you got to do is go test it out on your favorite video game shooters. Thank you so much for checking out my video. Please like, subscribe, and comment. And again, thank you for watching. Love you all.